newly formed municipal councils have their work cut out for them as they get down to the business of trying to keep their election promises to voters. Among the many challenges that these new councils face is keeping the coalitions together while also ensuring that basic services are delivered, with the DA taking over three uh, Gauteng metros and the ANC moving to the opposition benches. Part of the questions being asked is, how will they govern effectively? To help us understand these dynamics and many others, let's bring in political analyst Dr. Ralph Matecha, who joins us now via our video link. And uh, Dr. Matecha, it's always great seeing you, sir. Thanks very much indeed for making time. So many voices emerging over the last couple of days, categorically describing this not as coalitions, but as the consolidation, if you like, of opposition forces against the common enemy, which is the ANC. Is that how you also see it? Well, I think that uh, that is the you know initial impression when you look at this because uh, if there is no agreement as to what to do in those councils, if there is no coalition agreements, and I think it is a fact, Ayanda, that there are no coalition agreements in existence at this point. So without any of those, it actually means that uh, what seems to have motivated the opposition at this point, what seems to have pulled them in the same direction, it's uh, the common uh, despise of the ANC, the common uh, goal to remove the ANC from power in those municipalities. That has been achieved. But beyond that, nobody knows exactly what is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, nobody knows uh, whether coalition agreement will be reached, what will be the conditions, the extent of stability of the councils thereof. So that just remains subject to speculation at this point. Interestingly, what the DA is suggesting is that there be some kind of legal document where they can hold people accountable for failing to keep up to any kind of agreements that are contained in a coalition arrangement. I wonder whether you think that will be effective in trying to move us away from the dismal track record that a lot of the coalition governments have in this country. Well, it's a good thinking if you can enforce or adopt some kind of standards against which uh, performance of uh, uh, your people in government is measured. But the DA will just simply be accused of trying to behave like uh, an employer here. I mm. mean, we should understand this is a political agreement. Uh, uh, even if there is an agreement to this coalition, even, I under, even if people can sign and commit, politics is politics. Uh, those that are aggrieved on a certain issue can simply renege on those agreements and actually be part of a group that threatens a motion of no confidence against uh, uh, cancer. So that is the risk that will always be there. Is they can never deal with it once and for all. And, you know, making this thing as if it's a technical agreement, I think that is just to miss the point. It is good indeed to have commitment when it comes to things to deliver on. But it should be very clear, this is not an employee-employer agreement. It's a political agreement. Yeah. So I guess the obvious question then, uh, Ralph, becomes what should the voter make of what we've seen over the past couple of days? I mean, even from the DA's own admission, they did not expect to be running at least the three major councils in Gauteng. And even they don't really know what the future looks like. The question becomes, what on earth should voters be thinking about the kind of service delivery, if any, that they'll be receiving in the five years ahead? I mean, it's a difficult one for the DA. Uh, uh, they woke up in charge of municipalities without a political mandate. Mm. And I think that uh, what they're trying to do now is to try to work their way back and try to find out if they can build a mandate, if, 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 if they can go back to, to, to A uh, and start negotiating coalition. Strange enough, you usually see the coalitions in, uh, being in agreements being reached and then voting taking place. In this case, there's been voting, and then now you have negotiations for coalition. That's just how things have, have, have got to where they are now. And I think that the DA here, they will have to humble themselves. They are surprised to be where they are, and, and I think they did not reject uh, the positions that they have acquired in those uh, councils. The fact that they did not reject it means that they are taking responsibility to do something about it. Mm. And uh, they can no longer look back and say, we no longer want to work with the EFF, we don't want this, we don't want that. They are the ones that are in charge of council now, and they've got to build a sense of collective accountability by going back to those other coalition partners or potential coalition partners and try to negotiate something. It's been interesting watching the commentary around how we got here. I mean, the DA had been very expressive in their rejection of the EFF, for lack of a better term, in the lead up to the voting that's taken place this week. Ironically, the EFF vote put them in power 
which in some respects means that the DA may be forced to work with the EFF despite them not wanting to. As far as you're concerned, did the EFF outsmart the DA here? No, there is no force here, Ayanda. I mean, let's be honest here. The DA here <laughs> is not necessarily beyond reproach. They had a great opportunity to reject this. They fielded the mayor, knowing that mathematically it will take the EFF's vote mm. to get them to where they were, unless otherwise they wanted this to just be a charade. So they had already resigned themselves with the consequences. Even if they are surprised, one cannot say they did not resign themselves with the consequences of uh, succeeding in, 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 in those places. So they have succeeded, and now they cannot continue with the view that they cannot work with the EFF. They are already in this. They have to find a way to negotiate with the EFF and work with the EFF. And of course, the EFF played it very well. The EFF, whether or not the DA liked it, even if, they, even if the DA liked to work with the EFF or in these current circumstances where they don't like to work with the EFF, the EFF still gets what they want. Uh, the reality is that uh, if the EFF is excessively unhappy, they will put the plug on this thing. Yeah. Mark my way. That will most likely happen, and, and they will put condition there. And like any other political party, it is within their own right to put condition. I just hope they put condition that is in the interest of their own voters. It, it, it's got nothing else to do with special interests, but it is in the interest of their own voters, and I believe that they will do so. Sure. You've written extensively about the ANC. Let's speak about that party for a while, if we can, using what's taking place in Eteguini as a lens. To what extent do you reckon whatever takes place there today will be, call it, a temperature check for how the uh, council or the elective conference, I beg your pardon, of the ANC next year will unfold. Well, you know, I, and it doesn't matter how great a president you are, but if you preside over a, a severe electoral decline, usually you are not allowed an opportunity to blame your predecessor. So President Ramaphosa is going to be in trouble here uh, because of what just happened. I mean, political parties are there to win election, and of course, uh, 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 he has been driving anti-corruption relatively successful, despite some challenges that we have seen in other areas in government. But I do think that uh, you cannot go to your comrades and say to them, uh, look, we have moved towards clean government. As much as that is a principle, I don't think this is a way to sustain leadership in a party. So the blame game will most likely start. And anything, in most cases, what we have seen that will usually trigger leadership problem is, is, is rapid power displacement. And I think what we are seeing now is that in this 2021 local government election, the ANC has experienced a shocking rapid power a displacement from power. A lot of people who are in power for a long time are waking up without power. Psychologically and politically, it, 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 they are distraught. So mm. certainly there will need consequences. And they are looking at 2024, which is coming very close. And I think that uh, those that are in charge of the metros are also going to use the metros to say to the people, uh, look what we can achieve if, 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 if we build a stable government within a metro. So the ANC is facing a serious challenge, and uh, I don't think it's about reflection now. It's all about arresting the decline. You reckon what's taken place over the past couple of days has rung the death knell for the ANC? In other words, will they be able to bounce back from this? It's not going to be easy. I mean, there are certain trends that I think we will begin to realize. There are, you know, psychologically, voters also uh, get affected psychologically. They look at, look at a number of voters who did not turn out. And voters also look at other parties that maybe they, they did not think they were votable, if you like uh, to use that word operationally. Uh, look at Action South Africa. Some people have seen the party coming out. The EFF is also consolidating their... The IFP is also consolidating as well. And, and, and there is no gap that is being left by these small parties allowing the ANC to come back. And with the return of voters in the next election, it does not mean that they will return to the ANC. It could mean something else. So the ANC is already struggling. They are still holding up at national government. And I think that what this says is that they have to use the moment that is remaining within their hold across provinces and national government to demonstrate and regain confidence. Anything short of this is just spells catastrophe for them in 2024. Never a dull day in politics in South Africa. It's great to have you along the way as we make sense of it all. Ralph Matecha, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Dr. Ralph Matecha is a political analyst.